Hey folks, this is Tony Aguilar and we've got a, another unboxing and build set here, 170 second scale vehicles. This one is a 170 second <laughs> model of the Vespa from Eshi and this is probably from the mid 70s. Uh, it's the old school box. I built some of these things. I didn't build this one when I was a kid, but I built them in the 80s and they were already rebranded with a different red box. So um, this one's pretty old. Um, I've heard this is one of the old, few iterations of this vehicle in 170 second scale. And um, this, of course, is a Panzer II chassis with a 105 millimeter field gun in it as a self propelled vehicle for the Wehrmacht. Here's the back of the vehicle, of the uh, box, showing some paint schemes. It was used in gray, but I don't think it was around. I'm not sure exactly when they came out. Late 42, probably. They weren't gray very long. So it's pretty much a armor dark yellow type vehicle. Dunkelgelb. Let's take a look inside what we've got here. And um, do we have an old price tag? We do, $1.75. Boy, I wish I could say, hey, they used to only cost $1.75. Yeah, well, they used to pay people 50 cents an hour. So <laughs> do the math. Things aren't necessarily cheaper back then. And we certainly have access to a lot more things than we used to, but these have been, a lot of these kits have been brought back by different manufacturers. It's been taped. I have a feeling that Noble Knight probably sealed this just to keep all the parts in, and it probably came loose like this. Anyhow, let's see what's inside. It's almost like opening a tomb. I'm sure the decals are going to be nice and old. Got anything in there? No. Okay. It's a small little model. It really is. Because uh, it's a Panzer II chassis. And I've actually heard that this one's actually pretty good. Um, but take what you hear with a grain of salt. Just like follow instructions carefully. Because uh, sometimes they're incorrect. We have, we have soft plastic tracks, which seem to be bendy enough, maybe to get through it. We got yellow decals, which, you know, would be fine as long as they don't shatter when we put them in water. Which actually is something I've encountered. We have a crew figure that looks like he's Japanese. Like he's a Japanese army. World War II Japanese Army. Cute little Panzer II chassis. Three-piece hull, of course. Those things that would frustrate you as a child. We have a machine gun that vaguely looks like an MG-34. We're going to use it just the same. I'm not going to throw money at the problem and, and, and spend more money on it. A one-piece 105-millimeter gun with the with the barrel that will end up drilling out. I don't see anything here that looks too bad. Sure, it's dated. Uh, I think it'll paint up just nice. Got some detail on the inside of the superstructure. Instructions, which we will follow loosely because sometimes they're just flat wrong. Nothing too bad there. It looks like it's got gives you separate shells. It's interesting. Yeah, here they are. Wow. And a one-man guy in the crew. <laughs> he's he's overworked. So we um we've got extra crew members and stuff like that to do that. So uh yeah, I look forward to building this. Uh one of my viewers is always asking for me to build one of these things. So this will be coming up soon and he can enjoy seeing what this old thing looks like but uh yeah we're going to show you guys uh what this thing looks complete and also what kind of uh tripping hazards i encountered along the way and here she is okay folks here we are with the vespa built and um this was actually a pretty good kit um the tracks even though the rubber band tracks really had no problems with them um, they went together pretty well. Uh, we can, I normally would put like a staple on here, here to, um, tie that down, but I don't know where the stapler has gone to. Um, but, um, 
it's pretty good. I mean, it's going to be mounted on a base, and I know that's an issue. Um, the fit and finish on it's pretty good. It drilled out nicely with the barrel. Uh, I didn't want to go any deeper than that for fear of making the side part of the muzzle brake really weak. Um, I'd say probably the worst thing about this model is the machine gun that's here. It doesn't really look like an MG34. Um, but, I mean, it'll work. I don't want to buy an aftermarket one and, and mount it on there. Fit and finish on it's pretty good. Even the spare track is relatively well represented. To this, I may actually put a, a piece of thin styrene that shows kind of holding that track in place because um, that's that's missing on there. But all in all, it's a pretty good kit. The figures that come with it are trash. Um, that's actually the worst thing about it. Um, yeah, but it went together pretty well. No issues really on the instructions. Um, it was a three-piece hole, no problem there, nothing was molded. Um, a couple of these kits uh, are kind of unusual that all of the road wheels all have different numbers. You see 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. They're all the same, including 55, 56, so you can interchange all of them. Everything in this kit that had similar pieces, everyone had a different number on them, even though they, they could have easily be interchanged. The two sprockets, the two idlers, uh, any of the return rollers, they all had individual numbers, so um, you didn't need to really be that specific when it came to that. Uh, the hatches, the separate hatch actually fit on there just fine. Um, I didn't put the ammo in there yet. Um, that's the only thing that I omitted, that in the crew. Um, other than that, it's pretty much had no issues with it. Um, it was a very tight in getting this machine gun uh, pintle mount there in the corner. As it happens exactly at the same spot that it ends up hitting this, this shield. So it is very tight mix in there. But uh, we managed to get it through. Um, didn't put the fuel cans on there yet either. Um, other than that, this is a pretty reasonable model. And people spoke pretty highly of this, even though it's kind of an old model. And I agree. I think it's pretty nice. So, um, yeah, I would definitely build another one of these. Um, and these tracks are actually pretty decent. So, anyhow, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh the build review of the Vespa, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.